five things every custom home ought to have. I get asked a lot about the most important design considerations for custom homes. Usually I'm asked by friends not at all associated with the building industry, but it's fun to talk about among professionals too. These are, of course, general recommendations. Every home is different, and part of what we do in design is respond to different climates, different aesthetic preferences, different client expectations regarding performance and maintenance, and different budgets. So if you design custom homes, I certainly think everything on this list merits serious consideration, but I'm not saying that you're irresponsible for not including each of these things on every project. I also ought to add that this little list is not exhaustive and there are of course plenty of other considerations that are also very important. And so with those caveats out of the way, the first thing I recommend for custom homes is a fully adhered, fluid, or integral water and air control membrane. A water and air control membrane that is fully bonded to the underlying sheathing is a much, much better choice for custom homes than typical mechanically attached membranes. There are three main reasons for this. The first is that membranes that are fully bonded to the sheathing perform better, particularly with respect to air tightness. And air tightness is probably the easiest thing you can do to noticeably improve energy efficiency, thermal comfort, indoor air quality, acoustic control, pest control, and odor control. The difference really is noticeable. Airtight homes get less dusty, they don't let in as much pollen and allergens, they're quieter. I mean, air tightness is great. And selecting this kind of membrane as the water control membrane makes it much easier to actually achieve this kind of air tightness. The second reason to prefer fully adhered fluid or integral water and air control membranes is that these types of membranes are much more intuitive to detail, particularly at windows, doors, service penetrations, and building transitions. And more intuitive detailing means less risk. The difficulty is that when the water control membrane is the mechanically attached variety is that a little bit of water gets behind those membranes because they're stapled to the wall. Not a whole lot of water gets behind them, not enough to make the wall fail, but certainly enough to make a window leak. And this makes them more complicated to detail. We have to make sure that they're lapped correctly and that the heads of windows, for example, are sealed to the sheathing behind the membrane, not to the face of the membrane. Now, this isn't enormously complicated, and we make these kinds of membranes work all the time, but they really are just less intuitive. And custom homes with more custom details means that anything more intuitive to detail, install, and inspect really helps reduce risk. The third reason to prefer fully adhered fluid or integral water and air control membranes is that custom homes take a long time to build. Any water and air control membrane will be subject to exposure and abuse for a long time. Being fully bonded to the sheathing eliminates fluttering and improves durability. On jobs in sunny, warm climates and those with particularly long construction schedules, you might wanna also consider picking a self-adhered membrane with a foil facing for superior UV protection. The second thing every custom home ought to have is a drainage mat. The single easiest, lowest cost way of reducing risk of water-related failures in framed buildings is to drain and back ventilate the cladding. Depending on the cladding type, you could also use furring strips or cladding clips. The point is to create a dedicated space for drainage and drying. For stucco adhered stone and brick or other stone veneers, drainage mat tends to be best. It's not required by code, but it is at most a couple dollars per square foot. And on a custom home, why mess around? Usually you want that drainage mat right in front of the water and air control membrane, but if you're using exterior insulation, you'll want to put the drainage mat in front of the insulation. Behind the insulation, I recommend a textured building wrap. This can either be a fully adhered textured building wrap, and the only manufacturer I know who makes one now is Benjamin Opdyke, 
or it could be a mechanically attached textured building wrap over top of the fluid self-adhered or integral material that's serving as the water and air control membrane. This approach provides the drainage you'll need with minimal effect on thermal performance. The third thing every custom home ought to have is a fully sealed conditioned attic. The attic should be both air sealed and conditioned, just like the rest of the house. Since we're not venting to control condensation, this means we must either insulate on top of the roof sheathing with rigid insulation, or on the underside of the roof sheathing with spray foam insulation. And if you use spray foam, I recommend the closed cell variety regardless of the climate. Unvented conditioned attics improve condensation control, they increase wind uplift resistance, and are less prone to fire because there are no soffit vents to draw in burning embers. They also tend to be substantially more energy efficient and provide better indoor air quality, especially when the mechanical equipment is located in the attic. For these reasons, I like conditioned attics in all homes, even those that are more modestly sized and budgeted, although it's certainly possible to design traditional vented roofs in these smaller, more simple custom homes. I know some stellar architects who do this exceptionally well. However, for large homes with more complicated roof lines, more complicated mechanical systems, and more complicated services like sound systems, security systems, and specialty lighting, which require more penetrations through the ceiling, I consider conditioned attics mandatory. Oh, and we should never be relying on venting to control condensation in low slope, flat roofs. The fourth thing every custom home ought to have is balanced ventilation and dedicated dehumidification. I think a lot of people don't realize that their mechanical system is only heating or cooling the air. It has not been designed to introduce new exterior fresh air to their homes. The way most homes get their exterior air is through what's called exhaust-only ventilation. This involves using a fan, usually a bathroom fan, to exhaust air to the exterior. This causes a negative pressure inside, and exterior air will infiltrate the house somewhere to make up for the air that was exhausted out. So not only do we not really know where our fresh air is coming from, we're essentially filtering it through defects in our walls and roofs. This is a very short summary of a much more complicated issue, but where it pretty much leads us every time is to balanced ventilation. Custom homes ought to have an ERV that provides balanced fresh air ventilation with ducted distribution. They also ought to have separate, and I really mean separate, humidity control that is capable of providing dehumidification even when no cooling is called for. The fifth thing every custom home ought to have is an architect. Careful design is an investment. Failing to invest in good design, for example, by not working with an architect at all, often leads to homes being both larger and less functional. Properly understood, good design is really an exercise in efficiency. All projects have constraints related to cost, constructability, aesthetics, climate, material availability, and owner preferences related to occupancy, maintenance, and comfort, among many other things. Good design involves working within those constraints efficiently and responsibly in a way that produces the best outcome for any given project and client. We tend to appreciate this when it comes to things like spatial planning, daylighting, and the selection of finishes, but it's also true when detailing the enclosure. Excellent indoor air quality, thermal comfort, and acoustic comfort all fundamentally affect the character of the spaces we create and energy efficiency and durability affect how those spaces are maintained. It is absolutely true that not all architects are equally as competent in all of these things, and plenty of non-architects in the building industry do excellent work. But for the most part, great design is not accidental genius, and it's not DIY, no matter how easy it looks on HDTV. A custom home takes effort, intelligence, education, and experience. And architects are well positioned to provide their clients with excellent value in addition to beautiful design.